everyone, and welcome to the spooky Halloween edition of The Hop with your favorite drinking bros, the bad mamma jammas themselves, Gabe and Steven. <laughs> what up, people? Welcome into The Hop uh, with Gabe and Steven. It's, uh, it's that time of year. It comes... But once a year, we get spooky, we get creepy, and we have a tradition here on The Hop. Yes, we do. Which is that at Halloween, we drink pumpkin beer because oh, we like it. Finally. We finally made it. It's been a long time coming. It's our annual tradition, one of many traditions that we do here on The Hop. Pumpkin beers are some of the best beers ever. Some people don't like them, but too bad. We're drinking them. We're excited. We've got three different breweries we're hitting up. One beer together, two beers separate. It's going to be a party. Grab your Halloween costume and come join us. One thing we never do on the hop is dress up for Halloween. And I do feel a little bit bad about that. But you know what? Well, we didn't got have the- you. Got, yeah, you, you got the Jack Skellington look going on. I have a skull next to me. That's that works. That passes. We're, you know, I've been watching Dahmer and just even having this in my hand is just so uh, is a lot. I can't, but, I can't put on a costume because I won't fit in the chair. I mean, we have to, you know, we got to record a show at the same time. We got to. Yeah, uh, we are. Look, pumpkin beers. Are polarizing. Some people love them. Some people hate them. We love them if they're done right. They're not always done right. But once a year, we give them a little sip, get into the spirit of fall. And man, we have a lot to do today, too. Uh, Like Gabe said, we got three beers going on. We have a This Week in Gross this week. We got three breweries uh, that we're hitting. We uh, have a jam-packed episode, as always. So, uh, hey, if you're not following us on YouTube, you should be doing that. It's uh, just search for the Hop of Craft Beer podcast because we look great this week. I have a skull. Gabe has Jack Skellington stuff. Our backgrounds look amazing now, and uh, I, should... I am in Halloween Town. Like I'm just there. Yeah, Gabe's obsessed with Halloween Town, and it's like it's 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 a little bit of a, an addiction. We're worried about it, but you know we're looking into it. Um, that movie's dope, man. Nightmare <laughs> Before Christmas, dope movie. Uh, what else? Oh, you can follow at the HO Podcast on Instagram and Twitter. You can uh, follow us on Facebook. You can send us an email if you have requests or anything of that nature, or you want to, uh, you know, give suggestions for what we should do next as we head into the holiday season, the at gmail.com. And you can rate, review, subscribe, follow, whatever they call it on your podcast platform of choice. But really those rate and reviews are the best way to get in touch with us. We appreciate everyone that's done that. We do read them. We do see them. We love you very much. So, uh, engage with the hop this holiday season. Let us know what breweries to hit up next. Let us know what breweries to repeat. Let us know if there is a local pumpkin patch near you and what the prices are. Because apparently I've learned that unless you're in Vermont, pumpkin patch, like to go buy a pumpkin at like a pumpkin patch is pretty expensive. But in Vermont, oh, the deals, Stephen, the deals. (laughs) I've never in my life thought, you know, you know, you're an adult when you start thinking about what it costs (laughs) to pick a pumpkin. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. We got three pumpkins and 10 little pumpkin gourds for like $5 total. It was insane. Wow. Um, well, Verm- I- Vermont, they don't mess around. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so check that out. We have some spooky news to get into. So let's do it. Beer news. All right. Uh, in fairness, not that much news, but there's some stuff going on. Uh, Reyes beer division. Look, I don't like to cover distribution news on the hop. We're not going to talk too much about this, but I did just think it was noteworthy. They are buying things up right, left, and center. They are scooping up brands and expanding into territories. Just last week, they bought a place in uh, a brand in Hawaii. They're all over the place. Reyes, um, be afraid. Be very afraid. They're coming for you. They're coming for every brewery ever. Speaking of giant companies, Kroger and Albertsons are apparently merging. This is not beer news, but I did just want to flag it because um, <laughs> it makes like a like a grocery monopoly, and I'm afraid of it. 
A um, grocery monopoly. Maybe they'll have games inside it's, when you go buy your groceries. <laughs> they're going to have a lot of beer in there. I can guarantee you that. That's true. Yeah, they will. I'm pretty. Doesn't Kroger's already have like the cheap stuff or no? Kroger has Kroger has everything. Kroger's like enormous. And Albertsons is if if you had one more that was enormous, it would be Albertsons or Albertsons or whatever it's called. So it's a huge uh, deal. If it goes through, who knows? Maybe it'll be a um, fucking. Oh, God. <laughs> A situation. Don't even say it. Yeah. Don't even say it. <laughs> a, a Maui brewing situation. Yeah. Uh, and Brew Dog. Brew Dog has opened a new tap room in Atlanta. Cool, Whatever. I, guess. I mean, uh, we. They still don't. got shit to clean up. So yes. Until that happens, uh, here's a positive spin on Atlanta. I found out Atlanta recently. I found this out recently. Atlanta has the biggest airport in the world. You didn't. Not U.S. The world. I didn't. I didn't know the world. Yeah, I guess I didn't think about. I mean, I knew it's the biggest in in the United States. I didn't know really the how, world. That's, how big is this freaking thing? Like we damn. flew into it. We sure did. Well, that was a while ago. Yeah, it didn't feel that big when we were in it, but yeah, um, definitely not. But uh, let's see. Okay, our our first story here, I guess, um, is just Trillium Brewing Company. Just wanted to flag they are um, making some moves. So. We've talked a bit about Trillium in the past. Uh, they've been on our show. Uh, they're a great company in Massachusetts, and they're they're making a lot of moves all the time. But basically what they're doing is they're kind of officially moving out of their original location, which was their flagship location uh, in Canton, Massachusetts, I believe. And so they've moved to a giant space that they purchased. It's uh, They're calling it, it's, it's a former Reebok campus, um, oh. and it's called, they're calling it their flagship campus. So that's kind of cool. It's like a brewery with a campus, which is, um, which is insane. They've, wow. ac- they acquired it in 2019. So they've had it, but they're kind of making that, making that home, uh, and just moving everything there. They also purchased the, uh, equipment that was left behind from Spencer brewery, pour one out. May they rest in peace. We love them. Last time they were on our show, by the way last Halloween episode. Um, That's true. That's very so, true. But Trillium is, so they bought that equipment. They're ma- basically making that their flagship campus and they're putting their original location in Canton. They're make, they're putting that up as sort of a turnkey operation, meaning uh, putting it up for sale. So, that's cool. Um, they're just they're just consolidating everything, moving it to its main space. They do have, and we've talked about this in the past, but they do have a tap room near uh, Fenway, sort of uh, right outside uh, Fenway Park there. They also have a seasonal beer garden that they do in the summer on the Rose Kennedy Greenway. They have a restaurant in Fort, Fort Point uh, in that district, and they have a farm in North Stonington, Connecticut, which is the coolest part Jesus, of their whole. What, what don't they have? Um, they they don't have a location in Canton anymore. That is nah. <laughs> hey, a brewery right next to a ballpark. I mean, <laughs> amen. Uh, and I'll there go- are several, and I went I went there, and um, yeah, it's that's uh, it's Fenway, but you know, hey, it's historic. You got to give them something. You know, give them their due. Give them their due. Go Yankees. Hell uh, yeah. So yeah, Trillium. You know, good good for you guys making moves, getting out there, getting after it. Love it. I think it's safe to say Trillium is due for their own episode. I, I would think it's safe to say that. Uh, yes. We'll see. We'll get there. We'll get there. All right. Uh, the Gab. The Gab. Great, <laughs> the Great American Beer Festival uh, has concluded. It's over. It's done. If you want to go to F and Bad, you missed your chance. The winners have been posted online. As always, we like to kind of go through kind of quickly Find some breweries we've done or breweries that just we think are funny, like this one. Uh, the brewery name is Uber Brew, which makes me think of Uber the app. If Uber the app had a brewery, Uber brew. amazing. Uber. <laughs> uh, they won gold in uh, the American wheat beer category for their beer called White Noise. And can I ask? Um, can, can I just ask a quick question about uh, about Uber Brew? Where? Where are they from exactly? Like what? Uh, Uber Brew. They are from Billings, Montana. Montana. <laughs> you know, Montana, that state. Oh, that's where they're from. God. 
Uh, just, but yeah, I mean, the whole the whole list is on there. You know, if we were to read all of this, let's be real, people would probably stop listening. Um, another honorable mention in the American style strong pale ale edition, Ghost Town Brewing on brand. Uh, they <laughs> spooky, won spooky out of Oakland. <laughs> uh, they won for their beer called Mordant. Uh, again, that was the American style strong pale ale. I see Casa Agria. Welcome back. Love it. I see. A lot of other ones, Skipping Rock, Red Rock, Chicago Brewing, Allagash, always on the list, Black Dog, I see Cigar City, Three Nations, I see Sonder Brewing, Pilot Brewing, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this one, XUL Beer Co. Zool? I wanted to uh, I wanted to give a shout out to the bronze winner in the uh, collaboration category, which was a collaborate, it's called Guns Out for Grain Out, and it's a collaboration between... Pizza Port, Ocean Beach, Carl Strauss, and Chula Vista Brewery, a brewery where the hop logo hangs in proud honor. And they've been on our show as well. So I want to give a shout out to them. Good job winning Touchdown! the Browns. Yes. Unbelievable. Uh, Joe, and can I just say uh, separately well. of this that I'm having like major deja vu right now because it was this time. I mean, it's just, it's the year, it's the time of year, but it was mm-hmm. our. Halloween episode last year when we did the Gab winners. Um, and uh, between that and talking about Spencer, and um, I just feel like we're redoing that episode, to be honest with you. Uh oh. <laughs> well, hey, but if with it better broke, backgrounds. Don't, don't fix it. Yeah, exactly. With better backgrounds, yeah. There but we go. I mean, this this might turn into the part of the tradition. It's like, yeah, we got spooky beers, pumpkin beers, Halloween, and the Gab for winners. This is what the second half of October is like in the beer world. All right, one more thing to do before we get drinking, and it's back. This week in gross. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna boy. I'm gonna just start by talking about the beer and then we'll get into oh, why it exists. Boy. How about that? Okay. okay. Uh, it comes out of Anheuser Busch. Shocker. Yeah. Who else? Uh, this is an all natural beer uh, brewed with turkey broth. Uh, it is a nutritious and tasty snack that helps to promote a healthy digestive system for your dog. Did you ever want to give your dog a beer? Well, now you no, can. Thanks probably shouldn't. To Anheuser Busch, they first uh, debuted a dog brew in 2020, which was made with pork. But this year, they're making it with turkey broth. Uh, <laughs> I'm having an episode. Someone help me. Are you kidding me? This pork is. Oh my god. Ew. I mean. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, oh, just, I don't even know where to begin. Um, all right. I, I, uh, I What I will give them is that dogs are cute. Dogs are better than people. We don't deserve dogs. <laughs> I'll give you that. But I, I just, I don't know. Like, obviously, it's for a dog. And they say straight up on the website, like, I mean, you can drink it, but we suggest not to, we had to try it to make sure it's like safe. And that's part of the job. And it's like, you bastards deserve it. But <laughs> Jesus, Mary and Joseph's like, like, what are we doing here? The idea of Turkey and beer in one place. I mean, I just wish they wouldn't call it beer, but I get it. It's gimmick. It's cute, but ew, just, um, yeah. And also, uh, just as a disclaimer, if you're listening to this and you've never thought about giving beer to your dog and you somehow think that's a good idea, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't that's do a that. perfect segue into what I was going to say is my favorite part of the article is the FAQs. Shall we? Can sure. dro- dogs actually drink beer? Nope. They cannot. That's why they made this. Can humans drink the stuff? That's where they basically were like, we if it's your thing, it shouldn't be anyone's thing. Don't that's drink what you're this. into. Uh, how do you recommend I serve this product? You can pour it into your dog's bowl by itself or over food. <laughs> can be served cold or room temperature. 
Bruh. So you can pour basically room temperature turkey water over your dog's food or it, just like, have it lap it up out of a bowl. If your dog doesn't bite you that night, like <laughs> you, there's something wrong with your dog. Like I just I don't think if anything, I'd give it to him on the side and be like, maybe he'll like it. But uh. and where can you buy it? Uh, dog brew is sold only on the Internet. But they say, don't worry, we do ship to all states. We'll get Fido his brew somehow, some way. No, you won't. You're not going to give Fido his brew because you're going to kill him. (laughs) Apparently two years ago when they rolled it out, it sold out in 24 hours. So there are people out there that are scooping this up. Yeah, well, there's also a vegetable broth, soup, beer, whatever, and that sold out too. It doesn't mean it's right. If you and I had to drink another can of the tomato basil or drink one can Mm. of this, which, where are you going? I I gotta go tomato, I think. I think so too, because at least then I'm drunk at the end of it. Oh, okay. I was about (laughs) to say like, wow, he's really going to be like, I don't know, let's see. No, (laughs) no, no, no. no. Don't worry. Don't worry. This is... Like, that's bad, but that's at least for people. For humans? <laughs> this ain't for people. Like, I, uh... That's no. at least human food? Uh, yeah. Yuck. In all capital letters, it is not a meal replacement. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. What's wrong with Fido? Well, he's just been <laughs> lapping up that Anheuser-Busch can for three days. He won't oh, eat any food. You don't know about Anheuser Busch's new dog <laughs> beer? <laughs> Ew. All right. Everyone we're, leaves. We're going to If there were two people on this planet that needed a beer, it's uh it's Gabriel and Steven right now. So let's get into it. Here we go. Let's get spooky and weird. I'm scared. Also, I'm scared. I do the Halloween toasts every year too. That's Yeah, another, what the hell? We got to we got to switch it up, honestly. It's just the way the cookie you do crumbles. Halloween. I don't know what you do Oktoberfest. It's you, bullshit. You I'm think I want foul. this responsibility? Where's the flag? Throw the flag. <laughs> okay, give your attention to this excerpt from a poem by Maurice Kilween Guevara. Tonight, I light the candles of my eyes in the lee and swing down this branch full of red leaves. Yellow moon, skull, and spine of the hair arrow me to town on the neck of the air. I hear the undertaker make love in the heather. The candy maker, poor fellow, is under the weather. Skunk, moose, raccoon, they go to the doors in threes with a torch in their hands, or please, oh please. Now the dogs of the cemetery are starting to bark at the vision of her bobbing up through the dark. When she opens her mouth to gasp for air, a moth flies out and lands in her hair. I didn't expect the music to get punchy. That's not part of the poem. The apples are thumping, winter is coming, the lips of the pumpkin soon will be humming. By the call of the crow on the first of the year, something will die, something appear. That was terrifying. (laughs) Is it fading out? What's happening? Go away. Okay. All right, I got it. I didn't expect it to get punchy. Yeah, me neither. All of a sudden, there there were... (laughs) <laughs> there were pianos and it was bump, bump, and I was like, "What's happening?" Um, a little less Beethoven. <laughs> I liked it. I think it sounded creepy as hell. Thank you. You ready to drink? It, I, I, I've been ready to drink since we said hello to these people. Let's do it. Pumpkin. <laughs> Okie dokie, we're kicking things off together, sharing a beer. Uh, as it's a party! It's a pumpkin party! It's a pumpkin ale out of Lone Pine Brewing from Portland, and that is Portland, Maine, not Portland, Oregon. The one on Gabe's side. Wee. That's where we are. It is a pumpkin ale at 4.2% ABV, nice and light. Uh, Untapped has it at 3 Point six seven beer advocate is not aware of its existence and the IBUs do not matter. Here she is in the glass. Here Dark, she is. Amber wooden color uh, poured with a very thick sort of uh, tan head with 
uh, some good retention. Has since receded, but it's still got some foam lingering across the top. I've got a fun little skeleton guy holding my beer. That's really excited about it. Oh, that's cute. If you're not on YouTube, get out <laughs> there and check it out. That is a Dorable. Hey, I'm- listen, sometimes you move in with someone and they break out something and you go, hey, can I borrow that? <laughs> so here we are. So it's a pumpkin ale that's that's low in ABV. Now, I have expressed on the show before that I like my pumpkin ales to be on the higher side of alcohol. Here's why. It's because uh, pumpkin tends to be sweet. And, uh, you know, they technically call these a yam beer or, you know, it's a spiced or herbed beer. So it can be pretty sweet if done the wrong way. There are some pumpkin beers that I've had that are sort of cloying in that way. Hopefully this isn't that. But... Um, but it's it's a lower ABV option, which is a good way for us to start off the day. But it's absolutely pretty straightforward, though, right? I mean, it's it's a pumpkin ale. There's no twists and turns on it. It's just that's what it is. It's brewed with pumpkin, brewed with spices. The malts are two row pale malt, Munich light, caramel, victory malt, roasted barley, and oats, which makes me think it's going to be a little creamy, maybe. And the hops, it just says Spalter Select. That's a, we got a new hop. That's new hop in town. New hop. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, from the brewery, pumpkin spice and everything nice, brewed with real pumpkin and a carefully curated blend of seasonal spices. Pumpkin party pumpkin ale is an ode to the Northeast's favorite season. Hit the patch, bring a glass and revel in the wistful flavors of fall. Beautiful. I like that. I like that last line. That was fun. Oh yeah, in the glass it's um it's it's classic. It smells like an amber ale with some spiciness behind it, which I like. Well, I I some I would say a lot of spiciness behind it. I think yes. it's mostly spice. I think yeah. it's pumpkin pie. I think it's cinnamon. I think it's nutmeg. I think it's a little bit of coriander. I think it's I just think it's pumpkin pie. Think of all the flavors, put it in liquid form, put it in a glass and bada bing, bada boom. Yeah, it's got some uh, some esters to it. It's got a good bit of honey. It's got a good bit of um, a little bit of of like grassiness to it, but it's very much pumpkin pie. The coriander is there, too. And I think that's interesting to me um, because that's not really Mm -hmm. what you associate with, with pumpkin. You associate like ginger, nutmeg. Um, I can't tell if it smell. I know it's only 4.2, so it's not going to be that strong, but I can't tell if it smells kind of boozy or not. I don't think it smells boozy, but I think it smells, um, again, it's got some like esters coming off it, which I think yeah. give it, give it that, that quality, but I don't think it's, I, I'm not smelling like booze or alcohol or anything like that on it. But yeah, it might just be the spices. It's I, I'll say this. It smells fun. It smells dope. It smells like perfect way to start off the episode, a perfect way to start off a flight. Yeah. And there's also those warming spices in there, too. You know, the vanilla, a little bit of molasses. Um, mm. You know, it's like it's candy and sugar, maybe a little brown sugar. Mm hmm. But it doesn't smell too sweet. It's just that when you when you smell these, you do tend to get more of the sweet notes on your nose, and they definitely come through. Caramel, uh, you know, like you said, the burnt sugar, all of that fun stuff um, makes me want to go to a pumpkin patch. Well, unless it's Vermont, you're going to be paying a lot. <laughs> Let's drink this bad right. boy. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Oh, that's fun. That's that's very fun. Easy to drink, but it's got nice carbonation. I would say a touch of creaminess in the mouth. It's a little I don't, I don't want to say smooth. It, it's a little it, it's a little a little creamy. I'm just going to say that, but it's the back end taste is something interesting. It's like a spicy malt. Mm-hmm. It's kind of it it kind of reminds me of an apple cider donut. Yeah, it's got a heavy hit of something spicy on the back end that is almost like those um, spices that you would put in like a hot toddy or something like that. It's like a heavy dose of like nutmeg, I think is what it is. Yeah, Um, it is. Yeah, all those flavors come through. It drinks like I don't know that it drinks like an amber ale. I guess it does. Uh, But the pumpkin is definitely present. It's very thin bodied, which is is. 
kind of interesting because you look at it in the glass and it's got this nice lacing going on. Like you think maybe this is going to be a little sticky. Um, no, it's very light. It's very thin bodied, almost to the point of being watery, maybe perhaps I would say, but uh, I would agree with that. No, I, w- I would agree with that. Yeah, it's f- super easy to drink. Super, you know, I-, I hesitate to call beers like this crushable because 4% ABV. I mean, that's crushable, but the the flavors in it are so kind of overwhelming that you wouldn't want to just slam this. But yeah, and I'm kind of glad about that, to be honest with you, because as much as we love crushing beers, this is not I'm glad it isn't crushable. I'm glad that. You know, you can take a giant gulp, but you're going to have to wait a second to really appreciate it. Uh, the head retention was pretty nice when I first poured it. I would say about a centimeter, centimeter and a half thick of foam. And right now we've just got a ring. But it, yeah, I mean, like it is a little sticky to your point. Like it's sticking to that. It glass. looks that way. Yeah. Um, the aftertaste is really the standout feature to me. It's um, yeah. And, and I'm not even sure in what kind of way I mean that other than that it's it tastes like applesauce on the back end and that's weird um but that is what it is it's more grassy than i would expect it to be i get more hay um maybe it's this intense malt bill i mean there's a lot going on there the two the munich the caramel victory and then the barley and the oats and the barley and the oats are adding what i guess is a creaminess to it but it's so thin body too that i don't really want to call it that i don't know it's a there's a lot of contradictions happening here uh with this particular there is, and at the same time, it reminds me of pumpkin and pumpkin pie. That's quite mm-hmm. the feat, you know? I, I don't know how you get that this flavor, but get me to rem- to remember other things. Like, it's that's, that's tough to do. And uh, I know where I want to drink this. It's Thanksgiving Day, but early on, you know? Because yes. I don't know how you Thanksgiving, but uh, I start drinking early and then you gotta (laughs) it's a marathon not a sprint you know what i mean you gotta (laughs) you gotta extend that out so you don't want to hit your start your day off with some you know crazy nine percenter because you're going to be face down in the turkey before the mashed potatoes hit the table right and that's that's what the other thing i was going to say you got to eat so yes but i mean i what's okay so drinking early what's early like 9 a.m.? Like, yeah, I, I was going to say I wake up around 6.30, you know. Good. That's not true. By 7. No, it's not. There's no <laughs> way that's true. No, no. I'm talking like, t- I don't know, 1 or 2. Once okay. the coffee Oof. settled, you know, kickoff has happened. No, I'm not. All right, all right. I was going to say, I was like, if Steven's drinking before 11 a.m. I dip my I'm toothbrush have... in the beer and I brush my teeth with that. <laughs> <laughs> the alarm uh, clock goes off. I hit it. I roll over the other way. I grab the beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's when it's when for me it's when football starts. It's mm-hmm. it, and it usually starts at uh, one because it's just like a normal a Sunday, normal day. even though it'll yeah. be a Thursday. Uh, yeah, but um, the, this would go great Thanksgiving Day or Halloween night for you know if you're at a party and you're you've had too many shots and too many gummy worms that are soaked in alcohol. So you're like, I want to switch to something light. I don't know what you do. Pop out the pumpkin party from Lone Pine Brewing, which we on on these episodes, we don't really have time to go into every brewery individually. We sort of save that for individual episodes, but it will we will just mention that they are. I Again, I said they're in Portland, Maine. Uh, they opened in March of 2016 and they kind of have been crushing it. They do have sort of a core that they focus on as many places do, which is the sort of hoppy stuff. And then they use that to do what they call the quote unquote fun stuff, which is, you know, things like um, beers brewed with donuts, apparently. From uh, the holy donut. The holy donut. All In donuts Portland. are holy. Ah, except I see what you did there. For Bavarian cream ones. Oh. Uh, this brewery was also <laughs> named the fourth fastest growing American craft brewery, according to the BA in 2018. So uh, shout out Very to them. Very impressive. Co-founders Tom Madden, go football, and John Paul say their mission is to make Lone Pines beers. Touchdown! Unbelievable! That's for you, man. Might as well. Might as well. Uh, their mission is to make their beers approachable, adaptable, and available. Amen. That should be every brewery's mission, but they did it right. And, and that uh, they did. I would love 
some more pumpkin party. We do have to move on to other beers, but I would love to see what Lone Pine, what else they have. And we'll talk about that later. They've got some good options. They got some fun stuff. And this is, you know, I think uh, just to do this justice, I just want to say I think this is a really nice pumpkin ale. It's not. Yes. It's not going to blow you away in terms of um, like creativity, which and I say that because there's beers like the Rumkin out there from Avery Brewing early, early days of the hop. Check it, check it out. Round four. But uh, there are beers like that out there, which are pumpkin, but also there's something else entirely and they're just mind blowing. This is not that. This is very straightforward. No twists or turns on this one, you know, but um, it's perfect for the season. It does the job. It's not cloyingly sweet. It is well balanced. And that's how a pumpkin ale is best. Absolutely. Yeah, you said it. Well balanced is the perfectly perfect way to describe this. Um, You know, obviously... We always say more ABV, but you know sometimes uh, you just want to chill sometimes on the couch. The brewery you know, knows what's best. You know, sometimes you don't want to black out. Yeah. So, all, all right. right, moving on. Who's going first? I think this is oh, tough. I think this maybe is, I should go first. Yeah. Uh, sure. <laughs> yeah, you go first. You you do it. All right, and my but my my puppy is a doozy. I've got the Pumpkinville Latte with coffee and pumpkin. It is a whiskey barrel aged limited release. Where is he? Where is he? Bang! Exclamation point! Michael was hiding. I couldn't find him. (laughs) This is in collaboration with Iron Smoke Distillery. They are a badass dope distillery. They uh, partner with this brewery sometimes. Ellicottville. Brewery, Brewing Co. They're mm-hmm. out of Ellicott, uh, New York. My my place. Uh, it is 6.5%. IBUs are 17. Beer Advocate gives it an 85. Untapped gives it a 3.61 from the brewery. Brewed in collaboration with Pumpkinville for this fall season, this light amber ale is brewed with locally sourced pumpkins and freshly roasted coffee beans, reminiscent of pumpkin latte that everyone loves as the season starts to age. Aged in, change, I'm sorry, change. Aged in whiskey barrels from the Incredible Iron Smoke Distillery, aged six plus months, coffee, vanilla, pumpkin, oak, and autumn spice. Me oh my. And here she is. For those of you on YouTube, uh, it is mm, not entirely see-through, but kind of see-through. I think I can see my fingers on the other side of it. It is a uh, very, very light orange uh, SRM chart, probably 16, 17 range, depending on the chart, depending on what you are looking at. Um, yeah, I'm very excited for it. Uh, pumpkin Latte. In a beer, this is this goes down in the weird category, and we love that. We love the different stuff. We love the classics, but we want to get weird on the show. We want to try new things, and uh, I'm going to get into it. So here we go. Yeah, it's exciting because uh, you know, uh, coming off the last one, which we did say was sort of a, a classic pumpkin ale, you know, as as straightforward as uh, straightforward as they come. This is uh, definitely in the category of like. A little bit more, I don't want to say more creative, but just more outside of the box, which is not a plus or a negative. It's just uh, something different, a different side of pumpkin beers. And again, I say it every year and I'm going to keep saying it. Pumpkin beers have a stigma and we're just here to show you they can be many different things. This one's fascinating. Uh, You smell whiskey on that bad boy? I'm smelling so many things. I don't know. Wow. I am smelling pumpkin. Pumpkin bread, pumpkin coffee, pumpkin espresso. I am smelling latte. I am smelling vanilla, cinnamon. I'm smelling, I don't know if that foam on top of a latte has a smell. I guess it's just coffee and like spices, but I'm smelling the spice. I'm smelling the booziness. It's only 6.5. I would, get, I would you know, put that in the medium category for ABV and how high it is. But it it does smell boozy. I am smelling a little bit of whiskey bourbon, you know, that that range of things. Um, it, it's it's so intriguing. It's so complex. Like you take one sniff of this and you think there's like a meal in front of you in a way. But I am getting bread, like freshly baked pumpkin bread 
maybe a little pumpkin pie, maybe a little pumpkin pie crust. Mm. But hot well, damn. I love that. Yeah, that's uh that sounds like a that coffee. sounds like a party. I coffee, wish though. I was drinking that with you. Coffee, coffee and coffee, whiskey coffee. and pumpkin and me oh my call that doctor, am I right? Uh wow. Down well, the hatch. Here we go. Down the hatch. There it goes. And uh, Ellicottville Brewing, as you mentioned, it's in New York. Uh, I'm assuming you stumbled upon it in your travels, but it was founded in 1995. So they've been around a while uh, after a ski trip in Vail, Colorado. For some reason, that sparked the need for a brewery. And we love that. They have a giant portfolio of beers. They're another brewery that's just very worthy of their own episode and uh they have a brew pub now and they've got an 8000 square foot restaurant and uh it's just in, in sort of the uh upstate New York area I believe. Yes. How's the beer taste? The beer is so unreal. It's oh. so complex. It's so it's like drinking a beer, obviously, but it's like drinking like what? caramel and coffee and molasses and spice. There's it's it's does taste kind of boozy. Like it's not, you know, it, it's not shy. It's it's got a hint of smoke, strong vanilla. The, the flavors are so strong. Mm. Like I don't understand how anyone takes more than a sip of this at a time you can't because of how much is going on the back end is fun it's all the flavors you're tasting except they leave a trail so it's like a dessert um i would not categorize it as a dessert beer i would i don't know that you want to eat with this i gotta be honest with you maybe a piece of pumpkin pie but like that's it like this will ruin your dinner in the best way would you say we have an event beer Oh, we've got an event beer. We've we've got an event beer. Uh, very quickly, I just wanted to mention, give a quick shout out to Iron Smoke Distillery. It was started by a musician, Tommy Brunette, uh, back in 2011 in the backyard over some whiskey and a loaded smoker. So, I mean, concepts uh, coming together. Speaking my language. Yeah, <laughs> and you'll love this part came up with the concept of combining two great American pastimes, great bourbon and whiskey making with an added subtle hint of Applewood barbecues smoked goodness. So they smoke pretty much everything. They get a lot of their inspiration from Kentucky. It started by a musician. They have awards on awards on awards on awards on awards. And they helped make this killer beer that I wish I had 12 more of. It's a little creamy. It's it's a medium sweet. I would say medium bodied. Great carbonation. Great flavor. It's an event. It's epic. It will... It's it's the final piece of the puzzle for your Halloween night. Uh, I don't I I gotta be honest. Don't drink this at Thanksgiving because before dinner it'll make you too loop. It'll make you too buzzed unless you want that. And after dinner, it would just kill it. But th- this is insane. This is this is what I'm looking for when I want a weird beer for this show. Do I want to drink this every single night? No. But I don't want to drink my favorite beer every single night. You know what I'm saying? But this yeah. is something else. Wow. I have to jump in now on the heels of that after what you just said about Kentucky. Because that's our episode. Just, Thank you guys. We're at <laughs> everything. You just teed it up like on a, a level that I could never have seen coming because I didn't read your notes because I am ill prepared. Uh, <laughs> 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 but I'm doing the Kentucky. Pumpkin Barrel Ale nice. from Lexington Brewing Company in Lexington, Kentucky. Now, a few things about this. Number one, if you're on YouTube, this is what the logo looks like. Number two, uh, you have seen this beer around. Maybe not the pumpkin version of it, but you've seen the <laughs> Kentucky Bourbon Barrel Ale. Like, they're everywhere, you know? Yep. Um, and it's always kind of, it's just kind of weird because it's like, it just says Kentucky Bourbon Barrel Ale. It doesn't really say what the brewery is. And so you kind of look at it and sort of gloss over it. But I reach for it because they made one that was a pumpkin one and why not? The ABV 
is 10 percent this is why i went first <laughs> yeah this is uh this is gonna make you feel a little loopy uh beer advocate has it at 84 untapped at 3.74 ibus are at 16 and as i mentioned it comes from lexington brewing they are our first kentucky brewery ever to be on the show fun get some Welcome. bluegrass state up in here uh, and they are also a distillery. So that kind of uh, oh, look at also that. ties in with what you were talking about before. They're a, a half brewery, half distillery. What's behind me on YouTube right now is the brewery, the outside of the brewery, with some flair, some Halloween flair I added. Steve um, and the bats, Doc. <laughs> right? Better than a bird. Uh, but on the other side say of the, the brewery. The, the bats look like they're coming out of my side, so we did well. Anyway, continue. See, see we, we put in the work. They were uh, revived in 1999. The distillery had been around for a long time, but I'll get into the, the brewery a little bit. They were just they were brought back to life in 1999. They are the only brewery along the Kentucky Bourbon Trail experience. Kentucky uh Bourbon is big there, I hear. Um, also, I uh-huh. have to give a shout out to the human that I live with because they're from Kentucky and um, I hear about Kentucky way, way too much. But go Kentucky, go bluegrass. All right. But here we go. We're, we're doing a beer. It's in the glass here. It's on the SRM Ooh, chart. Yeah, I got a nice little little tall glass for it on the SRM chart. Nice I little put it tall around. boy you got there, huh? Right. <laughs> Uh, what are we doing here? Um, 11 or 12 on the SRM chart is where I would put it. It's amber. It's uh, kind of about the same color as the pumpkin party. I would say maybe a little bit lighter. But again, this one, you know, it's like a lot of these beers. It was aged in whiskey barrels or bourbon barrels. So uh, I'm excited for it. From the brewery, a barrel aged ale brewed with Kentucky sourced pumpkin richly spiced with cinnamon nutmeg and all spice this robust limited release seasonal brew makes for a flavorful sipping beer to slowly warm up with as the weather cools and it did win the gold medal at the 2014 world beer championship kentucky man if they if there's if they're gonna barrel if you're gonna barrel age something you want it in the state that knows how to properly do Whiskey they bourbon. can get the barrels. That's for, they, they that's sure for damn can. sure. Um, so I'm drinking out of this kind of oval glass. Uh, if you're not looking on YouTube, it poured with uh, about a centimeter of like an eggshell off white foam. It has since receded. There's a little bit of lacing, but not too much. I will tell you that the nose, number one hit is bourbon, baby. I mean, Ooh. I mean, oak, bourbon, wood, not a whole lot of pumpkin behind that. You get uh, some malt. You get a little bit of those um, sort of earthy hops. But boy, is it boozy smelling. And uh, it definitely lets you know what it is up front. Uh, and it smells delicious because I I like whiskey a lot. Um, Same. That's going to be epic, especially at 10% too. Oof. Yeah. I mean, you get your caramel. You get a little bit of toffee. I just don't get a whole lot of those, you know, those pumpkin pie spices. I don't get a lot of nutmeg. I don't get a lot of ginger. I don't get a lot of of apple or pumpkin or any of that kind of stuff. It doesn't it really smells just like a like a bourbon barrel aged ale, which we love. But if you just poured this for me, I'm not sure off the nose that I would be able to tell the difference between the pumpkin barrel aged ale from Lexington Brewing and the bourbon barrel one. So mm. it'd be interesting to ha- to kind of smell those back to back. But it's about the pumpkins today. So uh, I'm going to drink it now. Enjoy that beer. Yeah, this brewery, Lexington, uh, their beers are everywhere. They have a bunch. Uh, you know, we can talk about that later. But they anytime I go beer shopping, I always see them. Um, I think they have, a, a, they have more than a few weird stuff quote unquote which always makes for a fun time um they they have the traditional stuff but i feel like they always go the extra mile um we'll see on this one hey steven do you need a ride home yet (laughs) uh i actually love this um bang wow that's good i mean yeah since you brought them up it's exclamation point why not sometimes Uh, i like to say it too man (laughs) it's it's the pumpkin is there, but it is the subtlest of kisses. It's just a, a, a slight, like, in the background. 
this I wouldn't call this a pumpkin ale. I would call it a bourbon barrel aged ale with some pumpkin. Um, you know, definitely you get the the booziness of the bourbon. You get the toffee and the caramel. You get, but there is a, a, it's a little sweeter than some of those beers tend to be. You get some burnt sugar, some caramel, uh, nice nuttiness to it as well. Um, but the the pumpkin is just sort of just like I said just a subtle little ding in the background, which mm. is could be really the thing for people who don't really like pumpkin beers, but they want to be festive and get down with it. This is great. Um, it's very easy to drink. I mean, it's it tastes boozy, so I wouldn't really call it dangerous in that sense, but it's not um, like, I if I could drink this too fast, if I'm not careful. Um, Oof, uh-oh. It's uh, very good in the mouth. The carbonation is nice. Uh, it's pretty uh, rich in flavor. I would call it sort of medium bodied. Uh, here's the glass again. Just just no lacing at all. It's just pretty clean going going down. Uh, what else can I say? It's just do, it's do we have do we have a second event beer? I mean, I would call it an event beer. I think I don't know if it's an event beer like your event beer. Your event beer is. That's what the word was invented for. Right. But you have this, to like go outside and get friends together to enjoy it. But yeah, I I mean, I think it's probably only slightly sweeter than the regular bourbon barrel ale that they do. And it's it's very nice. I like it a lot. So. Dope. Dope. Uh, That's what you want. That's what you want. It's all about the pumpkins, man. We we like the the weird shit. So yeah, just don't sleep on this brewery because I know that, you know, you see them and their beers come in these four packs and they do come in these glass bottles, which are, you know, kind of brown glass bottles, which in the craft beer community, we kind of frown upon bottles in general, right? I know, I get it. But they are a family owned brewery. They're attached to a distillery. Their beers, this beer anyway, is really good. Like you said, you know, we'll get into sort of what they have on tap elsewhere. And they're in Kentucky. They're in Kentucky, our first Kentucky brewery on the hop. Hell Welcome. yeah. Welcome. Thank God. We're, we're reaching more to, states. Yeah, we're trying to hit as many states as we can. My goal at some point is to at least have a beer from every state. I mean, I don't know what the hell we're going to do about Alaska, but we'll figure it out. Gnome's got to have breweries, right? The Gnome's? Gnome, Alaska. That's a place? Oh. That sure is. I thought you meant... I thought no, not no, not the little creatures. I mean the city. <laughs> I don't Although, even want to. Although we could get some gnomes on the show. <laughs> I don't know how we would do it, but it could be fun. They're magically delicious. He's he's our he's in-house not gnome. A gnome. He's he's a leprechaun. God, son of a. Uh, on Halloween, he plays that. Oh, Shame. He, he's dressing up as an as a gnome for Halloween. Yeah. Uh, speaking of. Nothing, nothing, nothing related Speaking to this. Speaking of Halloween, <laughs> let's get Bob Ross involved. Speaking of Halloween, let's learn about art. <laughs> Can Art and Crafts. Pumpkin Party. We got a party. We're starting off with the Lone Pine Pumpkin Party. Not, okay, let me take my glasses off so I can really see. Okay, now I see the artwork. So we got... It's pretty dark, but Pumpkin Party is written in big, bold, bright letters. Uh, we got some fun cartoon drawings around it. It's on a pumpkin. It looks dope. The Iron Smoke Distillery collab, uh, Pumpkinville Latte. Okay, hear me out. This can reminds me of a soccer jersey. You know how soccer players have their jersey and they have their sponsor, like BMW is like larger than their like team logo. That's what I'm getting. That's that's the vibe I'm getting with the Iron Smoke Distillery just like right in the center with Pumpkinville Latte at the bottom. But it looks cool. I see barrels. That's fun. And then Stevens, I if I okay, let's see. We got we got a horse at the top. Kentucky Kentucky Lexington Breweries uh Brewing Co's artwork is generally the same for almost every bottle with slight changes to wording, font, and colors, but it's classy. It's solid. I like it. I'm going to give the Lone Pine a solid 6.7. I am going to give the Pumpkinville Latte a 7.1. I am going to give the Lexington Brewing Company offering a 
7.2, why not? I think it's fun, it pops a little bit, it's got some coloring to it. Bob Ross is here, Bob Ross didn't dress up, but don't worry, Jack is also here. Y'all thought I wasn't gonna have Jack. Oh, where is he, there he is. Y'all were mistaken, I got Jack back there, I got Jack right here, I got Jack right here. That is my movie, go see it. And that is another great addition to Can Arts and Crafts. <laughs> I don't know how any of that played out for the listeners of the podcast that aren't watching the show, but frankly, that's on you. That's why you should be watching. I mean, we can't help you with that. Uh, let's Use talk your about what eyes. else. Let's talk about what else you can get from these three breweries very quickly. Let's go in reverse order because why not? Lexington Brewing Company. Look. You can get uh, the bourbon barrel I've talked about. They got a red ale. They got a vanilla barrel cream ale, which sounds, Ooh. I mean, my mouth waters saying it. They have a blueberry barrel wheat. Where is our girl? I'm blue. Any reason Pumpkin. to play that drop? Yeah, literally. Pumpkin barrel ale, uh, maple barrel stout. Hey, are you feeling Christmassy? You want to get a little ho, ho, ho in your life? How about a bourbon barrel peppermint porter? What? You want to get That's a little crazy. ho, ho, ho in your life? We all want some hoes in our life, Steven. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they have a pilsner they have a white ale yeah who cares let's focus on the peppermint porter because that sounds delicious um that's lexington brewing what do they got at ellicott brewing co uh so right off the top for they have a game day series they've got a tailgate ipa and then they've got a beer that is called wait for it wait for it wait for it the herd is it a crushable lager and it appears to be for the buffalo bills it's got a big ass buffalo and the red stripe Go Josh Allen. Uh, but uh, it looks good. They've got, uh, we're not going to play her again, but they've got a blueberry ale. They've got a blood orange. They've got a goza. They've got a pineapple upside down shake. They've got an orange chocolat. They've got a foggy. It's an unfiltered IPA. Beyond Van Gogh, which is a grapefruit sour ale. I mean, the list goes on. And over at Lone Pine Brewing Company, I mean, they got some they got some normal and they got some weird. They got plenty of IPAs. They got a lot of seltzers. They have a lot of stuff going on. But can I direct your attention to an oak aged golden strong sour 11.8 percent? What? They have a beer that's an imperial double milkshake IPA called, it's called Daddy O. Daddy O. <laughs> Daddy -o. <laughs> Go. Full disclosure, Stephen and I really want to get hats that say daddy on them because every time we, we see them out in the wild, we laugh hysterically. <laughs> also, uh, the San Diego Padres are in the playoffs right now and baseball is a dumb sport and I don't care about it, but I am rooting for them because I call them the San Diego daddies and I just want uh, our course. listeners to be on. I, I would love to see the daddies <laughs> and the Yankees in the... In the final. Yeah. Go daddies. But if the Yankees lose, definitely go daddies. Because then I can just Absolutely. say that the entire World Series. Or the Absolutely. poppies. Whatever you want to call them. Uh, they have <laughs> a barrel-aged holy donut cocoa nibs toasted cocoa nut imperial double pastry stout. It just keeps going. <laughs> I mean, oh we should just goodness. end the podcast at that point. That's insane. Holy donut margarita craft seltzer, though. That piqued my interest, and I don't like seltzers. <laughs> they got a mango cream craft seltzer, which piqued my interest because cream and seltzer don't normally go together. So I'm intrigued by that. Um, look, there's a lot going on there. A lot there's of a shit. lot of of stuff to get your hands on. So uh, check out any one of these breweries, and they are all worthy of their own episode of the Hop. Absolutely, maybe someday, but that day's not today because we got to go trick or treating. Oh, please, can we? I want some <laughs> candy. All right, Gabe, should we do a last call and get the fuck out of here? Let's wrap it up. Last call. They Gabe? say parents know best. Well, sometimes they just need a nudge in the right direction. There is a New Zealander who his name is Ryan Stokes who during the height of Mother COVID, during lockdown, when we were all trapped inside, he is a musician. He wanted to make music. 
He didn't have anyone to play music with, except for the two people that raised him to be the best man he is today. Mom and dad. He said, Mom, Dad, grab some instruments. We're making a band. And son of a bitch, they did it. He taught his mother how to play the drums. He taught his father how to play bass. And if you think this is just like a fun story, it's like, oh, cool. They had some fun. Mother effers, they have an album out. This family is doing something right. This all happened in New Zealand. They were inspired by the White Stripes. Uh, the 20 Ryan is a 20-year-old guitarist. He taught his 55-year-old mom to play the drums. Two months later, his 60-year-old father picked up an electric bass for the first time ever. The family appropriately named their band Mama's Boy, with Ryan nice. crushing it as lead singer and guitar. Frontman vocalist Andrea Stokes keeps time on the drums, and Lyndon plucks the bass, all with a lot of competence, this, this article says. They have an album out on their Spotify called Who Would Have Thought, rightfully so, and I think this is one of the most badass things I've ever seen. Mm, apparently they're blowing it up on on the old TikTok, uh, which I am not a member of that community. But seventy two thousand followers or more have grown to uh, take to these people, along with seven hundred thousand views. Apparently, Mom is the favorite. She's known as the Mama Drummer. Beautiful, uh, <laughs> Mama Drummer. The Mama Drummer. It's it's obviously. A very like British and or New e New Zealandish ar article, so there's a lot of mum. This, yeah, not it, mom, mum. Across yeah, across the pond, mum is a phrase. Here, that's a flower, but across <laughs> the pond, that's that's what you call the lady that uh, raised you. But they're crushing it. Look, I don't have an album out. They do. They did it's it, one, and there's one, pictures of them. Yeah, and. It, 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 they, they use Ryan's bedroom as a studio, and the article says the band with no record label yet. Mm, maybe it's coming. Looking at you, Capitol Records. What are we doing? Get in there. What are we doing here? Get this family on SNL or something. Atlantic. Can we get them a gig? <laughs> Atlantic. <laughs> um, oh. I will admit I meant to listen to one of their songs. I did forget. My bad. Um. It, you should go listen to them. They are Mama's Boy or Mama's, what was it? Mama's Son, Mama's Boy? Ma Mama's Boy. And uh, to be honest, I um, wanted to get a clip of their music, but then I thought we would either get sued uh, or, well, also it's hard to find. But True. Uh, I they interviewed Ryan, whoever wrote this article, and he was talking about his mom saying that she seems to have the biggest fan base out of all of us on TikTok. And he said, also, I feel like we if we ever toured, she would be the one to drive a car into a swimming pool. Oh, not mama likes to get down. Mama likes to party. Not a lot of confidence in mama as the driver. Maybe stay with the drums. She's good on the drums. She's not a little bit on... of a recluse. <laughs> hey, you have to be if you're in a band. I mean, come on. Oh, that's so, so funny. So this begs the question, Stephen, if you started a band with mom and dad, your mom and dad, what <laughs> instruments would they play? What would you play? This would be really hard because mom, What can your parents play? Mom, big fan of country. Dad, oh. classic rock guy. So we okay. got two just polar opposite ends of the spectrum. <laughs> Uh, they also don't play instruments except my mom used to play piano. She could probably pick it back up oh, if she needed to. That'll, that'll work. That's an, that, that could absolutely work. And maybe a keyboard pop. I don't think he's got a musical bone in <laughs> the body. I mean, I've never in my life even seen him like drum his hand on his knee to a song he was listening to. I, cause in my head, I'm like maybe drums, but then I'm like, I don't think no. You're, you would obviously be the lead singer. I'd be the lead think, singer and the I feel lead. like you, you'd you be on keyboard. Well, right. That's where I want to be. And also, right. like, keyboardists that are also the lead singer, like, that's the most badass. Like, everybody's seen the guitarist with the, with the mic. Nobody yeah. cares. But if you got a piano in the mic, I mean, come on. That's the coolest thing ever. That's what about hot. You? What are Chuck and Sue playing? Oh, boy. Well, I mean, like, let's be real. 
My, I, okay, I would probably, I mean, all I know how to play is ukulele. I don't know if that's a front man sort of deal, but I accept the challenge. My mom yeah. would, she could probably learn drums if I, well, not that I'm a drummer, but if I sat down and we tried, she could probably learn drums. My dad, see, here's the thing about my dad. I love my dad to death, but my dad would be the person that's like, I'd be like, so dad, what do you want? Like guitar, drums, keyboard? Like, what do you want? And he'd be like, I want like the accordion. Like he'd pick something weird. So what you're and telling I, me is we have a ukulele, a drum kit, and an accordion. I am a listener. I'm a fan. I will I will support the Patreon right now. Where do I, I mean, sign? Okay. Like, that's, I, what would we be called? What's our band name? That's that's uh, see my mom my mom would want mama's boy and I'd be like mom we're gonna get sued and she'd be like it doesn't matter let's do it I'd be like that, no I don't even know what genre of music we're talking here but if you got a ukulele competing with an accordion <laughs> and a drum set in the background I am here for all whatever's off happening key, all yeah. off tempo it no doesn't one knows matter what's going on I don't know what genre that is but I know it's art I know it's, that we we call we like to call it new funk. <laughs> I don't know, but I think I think we should just get our parents together. We can do a six person band. You can sing. I'll do vocal backup vocals if I need to. But I mean, I think we could I think we have enough pieces to really make it work as long as they're all pulling their weight. Otherwise, they get cut from the band and we get a Ringo in here. You know what I mean? Like everybody pulls their weight. Mom and dad, no freebies, no handouts or not a Ringo. We can get. Ringo. Ringo's available. Don't know what he's doing now. He's apparently really into art. And if we express Mm. how much we are into art, maybe he'll join us. This is our pumpkin episode, but we need Ringo to see this and join our band. So please like, comment, subscribe. Get Get Ringo Ringo in here. He probably likes pumpkins. He Uh, should. who, Who doesn't love a pumpkin? We have to go... Ladies and gentlemen, spooky pumpkin beer episode, the third one ever in the books, me and the skull and Gabe and Jack Skellington and Bob Ross. We all say thank you for joining us. Have a safe and happy and fun Halloween. Get your candy. Eat too much candy. Drink pumpkin beers. Be well to each other. Stay safe. We love you guys. See you in two weeks. See you in two weeks in November, everybody. Cheers. Cheers.